what what about your boss makes you believe that he he has the ability to levy curses? I had everything going great for me, and then as soon as I started working there, a month in, I wrecked my bike. And there's like, if if you turn around for like just a minute and then you turn back around again, the man will just be gone. Hold on, hold on. Let's get into this. Let's get into this here. Hello? Hello? Hey, man. Is this Lyle Therapy Gecko? Yeah, is this Luke? Yes, it is. How are you, Luke? I'm, I could definitely be better. You could definitely be better. Yes. I can hear distraughtness in your voice. Yeah, um, I don't know exactly what the call screener wrote down, but, uh... Well, let's I, forget about what the call within, screener wrote down. Why don't, we, why don't you just tell me what you... what it is you wanted to talk about? Just a couple of days ago, I went up towards my old work where I ended up getting fired from and uh, went sort of cliff jumping. The jumps were not necessarily cliffs. And I ended up breaking my spine just by hitting the water. And not even five minutes after that, my dog ran away. Okay. Not exactly sure what caused it because it was just kind of an unexplainable freak accident. But uh, past October, I ended up wrecking my motorcycle that I had bought from the same place I worked at. And uh, I was pretty close to the place that I had worked at. So I think my boss, who had always had it out for me, may have something to do with that. You know, I know I said to forget about what the call screener said, but it says here that you're convinced that your boss cursed you and that is why you believe you have been the subject of so much misfortune yes i i had everything going great for me up until Mm -hmm. i ended up working at this place and then as soon as i started working there a month in i wrecked my bike and then I spent a month in the hospital, and as soon as I got okay, back, so I hold got on, fired. so hold on, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's get into this. Let's get into this here. You believe mm-hmm. your boss cursed you? Yes. Uh, like in some sort of mythical way, he put a spell on you. That, or he cursed the bike. There's, there's a million different things that he could have done. Okay. Specifically. So, um, why do you believe that he would want to curse you? Uh, I mean, he had it out for me from day one, and I was probably the only employee there that actually stood up against him most of the time. Mm. There were occasionally a few other employees that acted out, but I was the the rebel. Mm. What kinds of things would you stand up against him for? Just general unfair treatment. Like it was a it was a motorcycle dealership and I was a technician, so I was supposed to be working on the bikes, but instead he would have me or other people going and like cleaning the floors or cleaning the restrooms. So do you believe that your boss has some kind of I, I I don't know if you magic is the word but w- would you believe he has some sort of magical powers that he can use to curse you what 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 about your boss makes you believe that he he has the ability to levy curses so I actually have a buddy that worked there with me here with me right now and he was going to help me explain some of this. But my boss was from Louisiana before he moved here to Texas. And, uh, of course, in the area that he was in, voodoo magic was quite common. So my buddy here has witnessed some sort of unexplainable things revolving around the boss. 
he can get more into that if you like. Okay, let's talk to him real quick. Oh, hello. Hey, what's your name? Uh, my name is Nathan. Nathan. Okay. Nathan, so you work with uh, Luke, correct? Yeah, well, whenever whenever he still worked there with us, yeah. Okay, so you worked with him. And uh, I, I'm sure he told you everything that was going on in his life with the motorcycle accident and his his uh, cliff jumping accident and his dog and all these sort of negative things that are going on. And he believes yeah. that they're all happening as a result of a curse put on him by your boss, his former boss. What is your take on that? So honestly, I've like, my boss, he's, he's just kind of like a really, he's a really weird dude. And there's like, you can, if, if you turn around for like just a minute and then you turn back around again, the man will just be gone. He'll, he'll just kind of like disappear. And then it, it's like, like he's he's always sending us on this like trivial tasks, and then like you'll be back, and he'll just like he'll he'll be like completely gone. His his car will still be there, but you can like check the whole shop, and he's nowhere to be seen. So you think he kind of, is like, genuinely like, a supernatural human being? So I because of uh, because of all of the like stuff that's happened uh, in the last like in the last while since since the initial like motorcycle accident and I actually like looked up a bunch of this uh a bunch of like this voodoo stuff um and honestly it, it kind of seems exactly exactly the 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 kind of stuff he'd be doing he, he he is a spiteful man and it is a little bit suspicious how much how how much like his hatred uh affects uh, really everyone he's around. Hmm. Okay. Let me talk back to uh, Luke top- real quick. Uh, I was going to say, on top of that, there is a a second level to the shop that we work at that we are just not allowed to set foot in. Mm. And if anyone cares, we mm. immediately get called on the PA or on the walkie-talkie and told to come back down. Dude, actually, since you've left, there's been people, like, fired for actually going up there. Mm, what do you guys think is up there? Honestly, I have no idea, and I'm scared to ask. Yeah, I'm not willing to take that bullet and go up there. <laughs> like... hmm. So so I, I'm on speakerphone with both of you guys, it sounds like. Yeah. So, Luke, uh, have you been... Do you believe the subject of any supernatural magic before in your life, or is this the first time that you believe no, you, this, you... this would actually be the first time I've ever experienced anything like this. Hmm. Have you experienced other supernatural things in your life? I wouldn't quite say supernatural, but I have experienced some pretty unexplainable things. Hmm. So, Nathan, are you afraid at all of uh, any sort of repercussions from your boss now that you've seen what happened to Luke? See, I, I was for a while, but kind of, and this, this may have been a bit of an overreaction, but I kind of, uh, kind of from my, from my little research, like binge, started taking some precautions, like, like I, I always have like a, uh, kind of protection like crystal on me I'm kind of like hoping that that'll ward off ward off some of the the scary some of the, the scary shit from happening hmm. Hmm. so in your research where you you've sort of learned about these uh proactive protective measures like carrying these crystals yeah, yeah. but have you learned about anything uh reactive? after the fact, after having had a curse levied on you, that you believe that Luke could use in defense? I, I have, but from from what I've seen, it's a, a whole lot more complicated. There's, like, a lot of, like, I don't know. It, the blood shit freaks me out, so I kind of tried to, like, avoid looking into it. But from what I've seen, that's, like, half of what you can do to, like, get rid of it. 
I don't know. I more of what I've seen is that it's easier to prevent it from happening. It's a lot harder to like undo it. I'm trying to think. Can you like you can't you can't like tell the police on this guy? Can you? Is it? It's not. I feel like it's not illegal to curse somebody. No, it's it's not. It's not a crime, unfortunately. Although, I mean, that that might be good. Like the little separation of church and state. Maybe it's a good thing. It's not a crime. Hmm. Have you tried talking directly? I know that I, I can sense that there's a little bit of intimidation there because he has his weird secret room and his ability to levy uh, uh, curses upon people. But have you tried just talking to him about this and, you know, be, be even bringing up the fact that you think he might have cursed you? So the, the thing about this guy is that he's like, He's he's a a big intimidating dude. Like this this guy, he if if you like have his focus directly on you, it's kind of like you you feel smaller. Hmm. You feel like you're suffocating. Exactly. Yes. Hmm. Well, listen, guys. You know, uh, I mean, look, me personally. Uh, I don't know how much I believe in curses and supernatural things and whatnot. Um, I'm very sorry to hear that all of this stuff is uh, is happening to you, Luke. I don't think you deserve any of it. Um, oh, it's but, you know, I hope that you can remain optimistic in the future and not let the idea that you are cursed uh, pervade throughout your life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm working on it. Uh, honestly, after the motorcycle accident, I made some pretty significant advancements in my own life and uh, hoping that after this, some good things come with it too. What kind of advancements? Uh, I got engaged and bought my own house. Oh, I, I, I'd call that a blessing. That's the opposite of a curse, right? Yeah, um, I'm not sure it really had anything to do with it other than me being motivated to get out of the situation I've been stuck in. Yeah. Because after spending, after spending three months without being able to do anything after the motorcycle accident, I was highly motivated to change my situation. Well, Luke, man, listen, I appreciate you telling us all this. It sounds like you have a good... F it sounds like you and uh, you and Nathan have a good thing going on. So I'm glad that you have a supportive friends in light of this curse. Um, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, I mean, if you live in Texas and you see a blonde-colored dog with part Border Collie, please return it to me. Beautiful. Other than that, I mean, not. Don't piss off scary voodoo bosses. Thank you guys for calling. Yeah, thank you. All right, let's unpack that one. Um. Okay, we have this guy Luke. Um. A sweet man. A sweet man. Who unfortunately has had some bad things happen to him all at once. Um, I wasn't going to say this while I was, uh, I was, I, I, I might've did. I forget if I said it or not, but I didn't want to be a dick about it. I totally don't believe that that guy was cursed. Uh, people who do believe in that stuff, there's, you know, power to them, do what you want with your life. But, um, what I said at the end there, like, you know, the idea of, uh, don't let the curse pervade throughout your life is I hate the idea of Luke, uh, walking around after all this bad stuff happened to him with the idea that he's cursed because while I don't believe in uh, fucking witchcraft and, and crystals and stuff so much, I do believe that, you know, if you uh, are... I, I believe in, like, perspective and mindset and all that shit. And if you're walking around with the mindset that you're cursed, then it wouldn't surprise me if, if more cursed shit happens to you. 
So I, I that that's the thing that bothers me the most. I think about this whole thing is the idea of Luke walking around thinking that he's he's you know living his life at the whim of his weird boss. Uh, as far as what's going on in this fucking room, no idea. When he mentioned, I wasn't on board. In fact, you know what? I know I was just painting myself as completely skeptic with with no room for doubt. But when he brought up the room, I was like, oh, I, I was also a little bit like, you know, what's, well, I don't know what's in that room. There could be a cauldron in that room. There could be spells in that room that are causing all these things to happen to Luke. Another thing I liked about that call was the relationship between Luke and his friend. They seemed like they had a close bond. They were both united together in the idea that their boss is a fucking wizard. Which is so interesting because if you're... I feel like people who believe that they've been cursed are typically alone... You know, like you think that your boss cursed you and you're walking around and you're telling your mom and your friends and all that. And everyone thinks you're crazy. And that just makes things worse. But they have each other and they both. And then you got and then you got Nathan like doing research on behalf, uh, you know, t to this point. I guess, well, I guess for his own sake, not necessarily for his friends, although possibly for his friends. That's why I was asking him, you know, do you, have you found any uh, uh, reactive post curse preventative measures for uh for for Luke but I appreciate the camaraderie that I that I witnessed between those guys uh towards the end of that call I didn't really have anything to say I don't have any advice it is I've said a lot of the times before the show is not it's not really about me giving advice it's more about uh talking through and exploring things um but I hope things look up for Luke they seem like they are. It says here, uh, oh shit, it says he's only 19, so a divorce is probably not that far away. But after that, he'll, he'll, Luke has a long life ahead of him, uh, where I'm sure plenty of awful things will happen. And I'm also sure plenty of very wonderful and amazing things will happen. And hey, if it makes him feel better. Then I hope he carries around uh, the crystals of happiness or whatever, whatever it is. I don't understand the crystals, but but I don't have to. Hello. Hello. Hi, is this Cam? Yeah, holy shit! Hi, Lyle. What is going on, Cam? Holy shit. Okay, I'm I'm so nervous. I actually called you because I have phone anxiety. <laughs> I you know, I talked to a caller before um that claimed to have phone anxiety. I don't know if I put that in one of these podcasts or anything like that. But what I found interesting when I talked to them, and I don't know what the case is with you, but apparently phone anxiety is this very specific thing where uh, mm. an there's anxiety on the phone, but not in person. So, like, let me ask you this. If I were standing right in front of you and we were looking at each other and, and, and we were talking directly to each other's faces but not over the phone, would that give you anxiety? I'm, like, generally a pretty anxious person, but I would say that would give me way less anxiety than being on the phone. Really? Why is that? I think it might be like a fear of miscommunication or like not being mm. clearly understood. I don't know exactly if that makes sense, but like, I kind of think it stems from that. Mm. That does make sense because there's a lot of uh, cues in the face. Mm -hmm. A large percentage of communication is stuff other than the actual words. So like the tone, right. and the facial expression, the body language. Uh, and so you only... You're, so you're really riding on your words and your tone to express yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you're worried about misrepresenting yourself because it's a phone call. I think so. Yeah, I'm really afraid I'm going to, like, misspeak and not be able to, like, correct it or, like, have it be offset by my body language. Sure. Maybe. Um, okay, so how in in a perfect world... 
how are you representing yourself? Um, I guess it depends on the conversation. I mean, right now, I just want to, like, come off as, like, a chill person trying to have a conversation with the Gek. You, you are. You know, it's funny. Um, I've had people on this show all the time, I can and I can kind of tell when somebody is clearly very nervous, but you don't sound like you are. Mm. <laughs> I've been told I'm really good at disguising my anxiety, so, like, that's great. I'm really glad. I'm like shaking so bad. My heart is beating so fast. I can't tell at all. That's good. That's a good life skill, I feel like. Hmm. Okay, so you have phone anxiety, so you decided to uh, take, you decided to call into a show so that thousands of people could listen to you talk on the phone. Um, mm-hmm. Is there anything like in particular that you wanted to talk about while we're here? Um, honestly, not really. I'm just, I'm just open to any conversation if you want to lead it or I can like say something about like my life. Like it doesn't matter. I'm good. You said, you you know, I know you said you wanted to come off as a chill person and, and you, you're coming off pretty chill. You've got that, uh, I'm very you glad know, to know, you've got that, that I'm down with whatever kind of vibe. <laughs> I appreciate you, Lyle. Um... All right. Why don't we talk at least briefly about? Uh, do you? So you said you're a generally anxious person. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, what makes you the most anxious out of anything? Public speaking. Public speaking. <laughs> um. So, like, do you consider this to be public speaking, or are we talking like you in front of a audience of people, kind of speaking? Um, I'm mostly thinking about in front of audiences of people. I am in graduate school right now, so I'm like having to give presentations to people that are like really well like planned out, and that just sends me like over the edge. Uh, you have to give uh, speeches, and th- those speeches that you are giving are well planned out by you. Yeah, yeah, like it's my own research and like everything. Does the fact that they are well planned out does that? empower you though because you 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 sort of are going in there with a plan of action you sound like you're well prepared yeah you would like think so but no it doesn't matter it like doesn't really matter what i do i've like taken medicine for it no matter what happens the second i like get up in front of people i just start like shaking and like uh, (laughs) i still get through it but like it's like people always tell me they're like that was good but you seemed really nervous yeah i mean it's a it's a terrifying thing you know um I just did these live shows, and I was terrified to do that. Um, mm. You know, the body. I you did a really good job. Thank you very much, man. It's it's funny the the body does whatever it wants, regardless of the mind, right? Because like mm. before, you know, the whole thing of like picture the whole audience in their underwear, and like you know, you can you can sort of sit there and try to talk to your central nervous system and give it all these logical reasons as to why you shouldn't feel anxious or nervous and it just won't listen it'll just do sure. whatever it uh, it sort of uh, 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 it's in its kind of animalistic way just whatever it's programmed to do it won't listen to your human logic and reason because it's acting off of this weird animal instinct that I, I, I couldn't uh you know, sort of describe any further than that, but. Yeah, for sure. That reminds me of something one of my friends, Vince, told me this one time. It was something like we are gods living in animal bodies. All the logic in the world and like all the like brain power in the world cannot overcome the fact that you're like a pissing, shitting, like fucking eating human. Mm-hmm, and that's just mm-hmm. how it is. I know that's 100% true. You're a pissing, shitting, coming, snotty. <laughs> sweaty disgusting animal but you have the brain of a god it's kind of a wild thing um okay so how many of these presentations have you given um i had to do three in a row like last week like the week before last i had to do one on tuesday wednesday and then on thursday i also had to give uh two earlier in the semester and oh, so you done, f- on Zoom, so you done so five like of them by, you you done you done five of them by now yeah yeah 
Okay. All right. So after the all right, so on the fifth one, are you a little are you a little bit less nervous than you were on the first one? Or the same? Again, amount? you would think so, but I was like probably just as nervous, if not more, because the stakes were higher for the last one I had to do. It was like a twenty minute long presentation where I was reading from a script that I wrote. And, like, again, you would think the script would make you feel better about it, but not me. I was just, like, quaking the entire time I was up there. Hmm. Okay. How do you feel when you get off of the stage? Do you feel accomplished? Are you like, I was nervous for that, but I'm glad I did it? Sum up the mental state of you getting off of these, uh, you know, after these these presentations. Uh, I guess I feel pretty good once I get done with them. I mean, mostly, like, relief. But also, like, I don't know, if I know I did a good job at the same time, I, I'm pretty proud of myself for getting through it and, like, doing it with grace. Okay. All right, so what makes you the most anxious is public speaking. Um, <laughs> now, public speaking, it's kind of a... What, what in your everyday life, because you're not really getting up in front of people and talking every single day, but what in your day-to-day life makes you the most anxious? Um, probably, like, g- like general social interactions. And it's, like, really weird little specific things with, like, people I'm never going to see again. I just, I, like, loathe those little daily interactions where you have to, like, make weird, brief, awkward contact with somebody. Mm. Can, I, can we get an example of one of these? <laughs> um, I don't know. I had, like, a weird exchange with somebody that was, like, a cashier at a grocery store a while back where, like, she was closing her lane and I didn't notice. And she was, like, really agitated that I had come up, like, and, and she was just like, well, I'll just do it. And I just, I felt like such an imposition. And I was like, I can take my stuff to another one. And she just, like, still did it, but she was, like, upset about it the whole time. And, like, that's yeah. all right. I get it. Like, you're about to get off your shift at the grocery store. I'm not trying to make you stay longer. And I, I just felt, like, super bad about it. And I just left the grocery store, like, ooh. Ah, I, you see, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I've been thinking about those interactions a lot lately because they, they also, uh, kind of bother me as well i'm trying to adopt the philosophy of like look i am just a person i'm trying to move about the universe as uh kindly and as best as i can and uh that's that's all i can do and whatever anyone else wants to do to me around that in any form of malice is is none of my business as long as I am attending to my own personal duties of trying to navigate the world as as, as best as I humanly can. Does did, did anything that I said just make sense? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like all I can do is just float around and like take in what I will and not let what other people are doing bother me. But I feel like it's also easier said than done sometimes. So Cam, I, I, you know, we're sort of ending the, we're, we're sort of coming to a close of this conversation, mm-hmm. and, I, and uh, you know, before before we move on, um, do, how do you feel now? Is your heart rate at rest, or, or, or are you is it still beating very heavily? Oh, I mean, it's still down. I'm I'm way more calm now. Okay. See, that's the thing is, you know, there's there's the initial hump. Uh, of of mm. a high heart rate and a lot of nervousness, and then you just kind of relax. You get into it, you know. I'm sure you feel the same way when you're five minutes into your performance, you know, your presentation. Yeah, I mean, every every time I've have had like advice given to me, like by a therapist or otherwise, it's always like just do it until you get used to it. And I was yeah. like, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, but it did. But just do it until you get used to it. It doesn't work. You you told me on the fifth presentation, so you true. still felt as. So the the truth I th- I and I and I feel the same thing because you know these fucking live shows and all these other like times I've had to put myself out there you know repeated exposure to nervousness I don't know I don't know if it right, works yeah. but but I'm gonna I'm gonna take you, like, your therapist advice not being used and, to it. and try cool cool is there anything that you want to say to the people at the computer before we go Cam um hello internet people thank you for being my audience i appreciate y'all and i appreciate the geck and everything you do for us hey thank you very much for calling also shout out to my friends yeah have a good one let's unpack that call this is this is my new segment that i do 
after the calls. It's, it's called Let's Unpack That Call. Fuck, I, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cam. I liked Cam. I appreciate Cam. Here's the here's what's cool about Cam and why she came off as instantly likable is that uh, she had a problem, which was that she was very nervous, but she was upfront about it. And uh, you kind of respect her for going for it anyway, you know? She inherently put herself in what she knew was going to be an uncomfortable situation where she, her heart rate was going to go crazy and she was going to feel massively uncomfortable talking on this live stream in front of a bunch of people. She knew that that was going to happen and she did it anyway. And that's inherently, uh, you know, a, a respectable thing to do. Um... So, yeah, I thought that was very cool. And it was also, I found it very interesting. Uh, you know, you guys listening could tell she didn't sound nervous at all. I've had plenty of callers. Uh, again, you guys can tell where, like, you can kind of hear, like, stammers in their voice or, or like, like, a, like, a, like heavy breathing or, or, or they're stumbling over their words. And you can kind of tell when they're nervous. Um, but you couldn't tell that she was nervous at all. It's weird. It makes uh, when I hear people like her, I always think about like, um, you know, what else is, are people hiding? Who who else that seems like they are like put together or they're not under any pressure? Like it's secretly inside is is uh, you know their hearts on fire or something like that. Anyway, shout out to Cam. Uh, good luck with her. What was she's becoming a a doctor, a dog scientist or something? When I can't think of anything funny to say, I say the word dog because it sounds like a funny word. But it's it's a cringy thing to do, and I need to think of I need to try and actually think of a funny thing to say. All right, all right. This segment has gone on for too long. Let's stop doing it. All right. So next up, we have a treat. We have a treat here. Uh, I'm not going to spoil the treat, but let's start off by bringing in the first of two call. I'm going to talk to two callers at once, and it will be revealed soon why. I have decided to talk to both of these callers simultaneously, but let's bring the first one on first. Let's bring Devin on first. Hello, Devin? Yes. How's it going, Devin? Pretty good. Uh, what's going on with you? Oh, nothing. I just... Uh... Well, I wanted to talk to you. I never thought I'd get on, but uh, I wanted to talk to you about me losing my left nut. When did you lose your left nut? Uh, I want to say it was no last November. Hmm. Um. Okay. So November of twenty twenty one. Yes. Okay. So you currently only have one testicle. Yes, just just the right one. Just the right one. And um, it says here you wanted to describe what living life with only one testicle is like. Yeah, uh, it's it's a uh, it's pretty normal. Um, mm -hmm. You definitely uh, it, the sack sits up a lot higher. The what is a lot higher? Uh, the sack. The sack. Yeah. Oh, like the uh, describe to me what you mean by that. I'm I'm confused. Oh, the the the, the nut sack. The whole thing. What do you mean? It's a lot higher. Well, it's just because you got you only, instead of the weight of two two nuts, you you only got one. 
Ah, so, okay. So it shrivels so, up and it and it it doesn't uh, hang as much as when you have two. Exactly. Mm. So, so Devin, how did you get? You said you got into an accident. How did this happen? No, actually, it was. Uh, so I was at the local fair and the, it was the week before I found out and I noticed my left one was really swollen mm. and it, it hurt for some reason um, didn't think anything of it week goes by it was the swelling went down it was fine I get home from work and it was I was about to go to bed and it just felt like someone just punched me in the nuts as hard as I could and the it's like the pain just never went away. Hmm. It just stayed for about like an hour. It, um, and then it kind of went away. And then shooting pain came back. Ended up going to the emergency room. Um, and it actually found out that if you have testicular pain at all, you'll actually hmm. get in the emergency room right away. Mm. Oh really? Uh, that's like that's a fast pass yeah, for the yeah. emergency room. Oh yeah, like they 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 don't they don't they don't screw around with that. They'll just send you right in, skip you ahead oh, of the yeah. line. But uh, yeah, no, I found that out, and then uh, I they did all the tests and everything, and basically that night they told me, oh, you have testicular cancer, most likely. Hmm. Which was, which was kind of scary, and I'm sure. they booked me. They booked me for a urologist the next day in the morning. I they then they did a couple more tests the next morning. Talked to him, and about a week later, I actually went in for surgery to get it taken out. And then after that, uh, it was out. Whatever. Fine, as they said, basically they said the testicular cancer is one of the most curable cancers, so they told oh, me not to worry good. about it. Yeah. Well, Devin, listen, um, Devin, actually, Devin, can I, I'm going to put you on hold real quick. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay, I'm going to put you on hold. I'm going to bring you right back, okay? All right. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hey, is this Tommy? <laughs> This is Tommy. Uh, how you doing, Tommy? I'm fantastic. Uh, Tommy, uh, what would, it's great to it's great to hear from you. Um, what is it that you would like to talk about today? Uh, so I am uh, 28, and I have one testicle, mm. and that's usually my uh, my breaking the ice with anyone I talk to. I usually tell them about my one nut, but so far, no one really takes the bait. Really? What, what kinds of things do people tell you when, when you tell them that you have one testicle? Why the fuck would I know that? Why would I want to know that? Who are you? Hmm. Why are you in my house? Hmm. Hmm. Do, you, do, you know, do, you in, do you know anybody else in your personal life that only has one testicle? Uh, I've actually never met someone of the same breed as me, no. Really? You've never met another person with, another, with only one testicle? I've only hold. I've only heard stories. Tommy, what if I told you that I have a caller on the other line who also only has one testicle? My nipples are literally lactating with excitement right now. Tommy, I have a caller on the other line. I don't know if they've ever spoken with someone else that has one testicle, but I'm going to bring you both. Th- I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. What the chemistry is going to be like? I'm nervous. I'm excited, but I want to bring him in. I want to introduce you guys to each other. This might be a first ever for Twitch, honestly. Really, this is the first time you've have you ever like even spoken or like on a message board or anything with anyone who only has one testicle? I've honestly never thought about going to like a support board to talk Holy to people shit. of my own kind. But no, I've only heard right, stories. Gonna... I didn't even. I thought I might be. I thought I might be the only one. All right. All right, hold on. I'm gonna. All right, hold on. I'm gonna put you back in the queue, and then I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell uh, uh, Devin what's going on, and then and then I'll put you guys both. Oh, in. I love that. His name's Devin. I'm already excited. 
Okay, give me one second, Tommy. Devin? Yes. Devin, I, I, have, a, I have a question for you. Yeah, what's up? Do, do you know anyone in your personal life that only has one testicle? Uh, uh, no. I've heard of people, but I've never actually met anybody. You, so you've never, have you ever, you've never spoken with another person that only has one testicle? No. Devin, what if I told you I have a caller on the other line who also only has one testicle? No fucking way. Would you like to meet him? Yes, of course. Okay, okay. I'm gonna bring. I'm alright. I'm alright. I'm gonna bring both you guys in. Tommy. Yo. Uh, Tommy, this is Devin. Devin, this is Tommy. Um, both of you guys only have one testicle. Hi, Devin. What's up, Tommy? How are you, brother? My my brother and kin, my one nut fam. Oh, dude, fucking living the life. Hey, uh, one quick question though: Is it the yeah? You have the left or the right one? I have the left one. Dude, I have the right one. Well, so here's the thing. So technically, I, I I might actually be cheating in this. Technically, I do have two. The other one's floating in like my stomach region. But for all intents and purposes, I got my left nut and then just a little empty pouch down there, just hanging out. Yeah, yeah. So, so same with did did yours like end up like going inside you or? Uh, you know, that's a good question because I, I actually don't really know. Somehow no one noticed this as a child. I didn't find out that it wasn't normal to have only one nut till I discovered porn at the ripe age of, I don't know, 10? 10? Yes, yeah, yeah but I, was, I was only 12. But, uh, no, I, so I, I actually had surgery and got mine removed. Wait, so did you actually have yours up in your body too? No, no, mine's completely out of my body. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah, so see, like, I've got one floating in kind of my abdomen area, so, like, if I, which I should have surgically removed, because I guess that's, like, dangerous or something, I don't know. But uh, if I, like, go up to a table that is waist level, and I, like, reach to grab something, I'll nut myself. So, like, imagine someone kind of giving you a little nut tap, but, like, yep. in your body. Dude, so I, I mean, I, I I told Lyle about this, but I'm saying if you you could probably go to the ER if you have any pain or anything in it, they'll actually put you ahead of the line. No, I mean there's no and, pain. It's just hanging out there. Huh. Jeez. But yeah, I yeah I didn't realize it was weird until I was watching porn when I was like, you know. Whatever age kids find out porn, I don't really remember. I helped a lot of free on when I was younger. And, uh, you know, I started wondering why, uh, you know, why, why their sack looked different. So I spent a lot of time as a kid just trying to push it back down into my body, which was very painful. And, uh, spoiler alert, it, it, didn't, it didn't go down. It stayed right there. It, did, you, did you, like, talk to doctors about it or anything? And what did they say? Yes, yeah, so, this has been one of, it was actually a big fear of mine, letting people knew, know that I only had one nut. So when I went to go get a physical, and the doctor gave me the old, <laughs> steal me up and shit, they, uh, I had to give them the news, break them the news that they weren't going to find another little guy down, hanging down there. And uh, he looked at me and was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I've only got one nut. And he said, uh, are you going to get the other one, like, removed? And I said, nah. And he said, well, you should. And so he gave me another little squeeze, and then I left. Worst dentist visit ever. Huh. Yeah, do, you, do you have kids? No. No, okay. Oh, my God, I, they would only have one nut, too. Dude, that's honestly kind of a little weird about that, because the funny part is we were, me and my fiancé were trying when I had two. I lost one, and now she's pregnant. Yeah. See, yeah, I didn't, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, no, it, it only takes one. Only one little swimmer. <laughs> the, and, uh, and the sure right that, one in the overdrive. Uh, so you're you're one nut. You're a little solo. You're a little solo guy hanging out, solo dolo, as one would say. Is it small? Because mine's tiny. It's like a little. Uh, I would say golf ball, but that's pretty big for a testicle size. Uh, peanut, cashew, maybe an almond. It's tiny. No, is yours my, tiny? My, mine's not small. I want. I'd say about like you take a golf ball and split it in half. Yeah, that just made me think about splitting a testicle in half. But yeah, no, mine's a. <laughs> it's a little guy. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't no shame. Lyle, you had something for us? I was going to ask, is there, I'm trying, you know, because look, I haven't won testicle. It sounds like it can be a lonely experience. And I'm wondering, while we have both of you guys on the line, you know, it, what for each of you would you say is 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 probably the worst part of only having one, one testicle? Because I want to see if... if either of you have something like that in common that you might be able to bond over. I'll let you go, you go ahead Kevin. Go. Okay, all right. I'll 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 take it. Uh, the worst part for me is, well, I don't know if worse is the right word here because it's kind of subjective. But the most uncomfortable thing is I work in kitchens, so, like, everything is about waist level. So it is not an uncommon experience for me to reach for something and like i said i i nut myself which but here's the reason that that isn't necessarily the worst thing because like say someone goes to kick me in the nuts or like, gives me a little nut tap they have a 50 percent chance of missing and that sounds mm. stupid but it does happen if people miss so is getting nutted by a nut that is inside of my body is because that's pretty uncomfortable too because it's like inside of your body it doesn't feel right but is that worse compared to, uh, you know, like a hundred percent chance of someone hitting me if they give me a little nut tap? I don't know, but I would say that. I mean, aside from the the health factors, it's kind of dangerous to only have one. But aside from that, yeah, that'd probably be the worst thing. I'm constantly hitting my abdomen and nutting myself. Hmm. Huh. The, what about you, Devin? I got a question. Oh, I, I, I have. Me. I have an answer. Yeah. Do you, do you ever like? Like, when you wear a seatbelt in the car, do you ever, like, cinch the seatbelt up too tight and hit it? No, it's not that far up. It's still down in my, my nether region. So, I I would probably say my worst is, I don't know why, ever since I, I lost the left one, is it when it gets any, some sort of cold, that thing shrivels up smaller than you've ever seen it. I'm sure it's not smaller than my nut currently is. I don't know. Like, oh, that's it, another it, one. I, this is the opposite of a dick measuring contest. <laughs> How? <laughs> What's the size of your nut? So if I get like cold or something like that, you know, I don't know if everyone has this, but sometimes like one of your nuts will go up into your body. So if that happens to me, granted the minuscule size of my existing one testicle it will do that so there's it's it, it happens every once in a while where i'm just straight free balling it empty sack now that's weird hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm sure i'm sure you got uh it's probably good for swimming uh maybe it makes me more like aerodynamic i've actually i actually want to ask uh gecko a question do you think Please. If randomly, by chance, my other nut fell down into my sack, do you think I would lose balance? Ooh. What do you think, Devin? Devin, well, Devin is a fairly, I, f I think Devin, Devin's a fairly new to the one nut life, right? I mean, you, you Devin has had one nut for less than a year. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yes. You know, I was born into this life. I didn't choose it. It chose me. Hmm. Hmm. So, so Tommy, um, you know, you've, you've been uh, a one nutter for 27 years, Devin for less than one year. Yep. What advice do you have for Devin um, as he continues 
on his one nut journey? What can you tell him that you've learned that really only you, as the only other one nutted man that Devin has talked to before, can tell him? Make it your own. It's my breaking point. I don't know if I guess you have you said you have a wife and kids, but uh, usually it's my uh, my go to my icebreaker. Hi, my name's Tommy. I have one nut. <laughs> That's the best I got. Make it. Make it you. Own it. It's yeah, a great no, it, conversation starter. It, 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 if I meet new people, I, I tell them that uh, I want to be called righty. So. Or the one nut wonder. I'm a fan of that one. No one's called it. No one's called me it so far, but, you know, I'm working on it. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have a couple friends that call me the one nut wonder. <laughs> That's awesome. Give them my phone number. <laughs> Let's all hang out and have a little one nut party or something like that. Yeah, I feel like there's a burgeoning, uh, burgeoning friendship here. Some sort of like, you know, each of you can form your own chapter of the one nut uh, legends. The one nut legend, the story of the. Yeah, I got nothing. It's a working. I, oh, I'll figure something out. I, I guarantee. It, we'll see if we can find more people and actually create like a uh, big club of, of one nut people. Hmm. A cult, if you will. Yes. Uh, doing like an a, like an AA format. My name's Tommy. I have one nut. Hi, Tommy. Yeah. See, compare, we're, 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 we compare somewhere. sizes. Hmm. So, Tommy, Devin, listen. Before we go, before we move on, first of all, it was it was a pleasure to to bring you two together. I'm enjoying learning so much about the one nut life. Um, you know, I'm enjoying. Uh, I feel like both of you. Both of you guys, you see, you have the right nut, you have the left nut. So both of you together form a full sack of nuts, and I find that very beautiful. And you know, listen, before we go, do you guys have any other further questions or things that you would like to say to each other? I love you. Yeah, I, 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 I I'm just speechless. I actually got on. I love you, Gek. I Anything else you want to say to did each say, other? Did I say follow my YouTube channel? Oh, wait, yeah, uh, Vincent, it says here you have a YouTube channel that's, like, about having one nut, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, really? no, it's, it's, it's not about having one nut, but maybe I should go in that direction. I'm hmm. having massive writer's block. Maybe I should use my own personal handy capable abilities for yeah. some content. Yeah, you guys should do a podcast together about having one nut. Yeah. I have a video where I dance about a pocket steak, but that's a conversation for another time. <laughs> Beautiful. Hey, listen, thank you guys very much for coming on the show, and uh, good luck to both of you in forming your new nut chapters. Awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Take care, brothers. Love you, Tommy. Bye. Bye. Wow, let's unpack that. Um, I liked those guys. They were very yin and yang. Um, do we feel like they had chemistry? I think they did. I think they had chemistry. They were clearly, they were clearly very excited to talk to one another. Um, it's always nice when you have something about yourself that makes you feel alone to find another person, uh, in whom you can share your experience. Tommy, 27 years old, born into the one nut life, uh, a seasoned veteran, and uh, then you have Devin, who uh, is a recent member of the One Nut uh, cult, but is making it work. He luckily had a kid. It sounds like he impregnated her before he lost the nut, which is, is quite miraculous luck. Um, and it seems like both of those guys are doing very well. They're both very inspiring to me because I personally feel like I put too much importance on having both of my testicles. You know, to me, if I found out I lost one of my testicles, I would be devastated. I would be very, very upset. But you look at these guys, especially Devin, who, you know, look, lived 26 goddamn years of his life with two testicles and then had to say goodbye to one of them. Uh, I find them very inspiring. The fact that they are able to live these, these beautiful lives uh, despite... Having only one testicle. You know, having two testicles, it's not the end-all be-all. 
And that's that's what I've learned from this experience. I feel like if you meet, here's the thing: is like if I had one ball and I met another guy with one ball, um, I feel like you could complete like platonically, like no, there wouldn't be anything sexual about this. But would there not be some form? Would there not be like some enticement to want to take like your your right ball and his left ball and like kind of, I guess not like mush them together, but like. Do you, I can't describe what I'm imagining in my head, but I'm sure you all are imagining it as well. A fusion of some kind? Like a jigsaw puzzle? It would be a totally platonic thing. But, like, you would have... Right? Somebody in the chest, you would have to... Yeah, you, you would have to. You would have to. And it worked out so well, because if they both had only their left nut, then they wouldn't need to pull out their nuts and mush them together that would just be weird but the fact that serendipitously one had a right nut one had a left nut it just would make sense to smush them together hello hi oh my god is this lyle yeah is this mac this is mac oh my god uh how are you doing mac I'm um, good. How are you doing? Thanks for taking my call. Can I just say, uh, really appreciate you. I'm a huge fan, and and thank you so much. It's awesome to be talking to you. Oh, of course, man. Um, what's going on with you, Mac? Um. So yeah. So, um, I recently uh, got into uh, pottery. Joined a pottery studio uh, near me. Uh, since January, I've been going. I've been loving it, and um. There's this uh, older woman who's definitely over the age of 65 there. And um, the last bunch of times that I've gone, um, like clockwork, if she's there, I'll be at the sink, um, you know, washing my equipment, my tools and stuff when I'm all done. And she'll inevitably walk by and, like, give my ass a little squeeze and then just continue moving. And it's happened every time every time she's there it's happened um and it's weird because it, it it's it's harmless like obviously you shouldn't be touching anyone without their consent but she's like this little old pottery lady and it, it doesn't really bother me um but it's it's still weird that it's it's like clockwork if i see her i'm like well here it comes okay so this 65 year old little pottery lady is is grabbing your ass every time that you go up to the sink um yeah every time i'm up there she'll just kind of swoop in like just kind of walk past me yeah. and grab my ass and the last few times it's it's just it's it's gotten to be so funny the last few times i've had to try and stop myself from laughing when it's happened and again like i'm not even necessarily bothered about it but i want to ask you like is it worth saying something to her like we've never even spoken um, Wait, you've never even so you, 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 you've you've never exchanged any words with her. She just comes up to you. Not, and not once. Ass. Would not yet. Yeah, would not. Yeah, that's the only interaction her and I have ever had. We have not spoken a single word to each other. It's just really? bizarre, and it's just like this little lady. So it's not even like an aggressive squeeze. It's just like this little tiny, nothing squeeze. But I'm not really threatened by her. It's fine. I'm more worried about the optics. Hmm. You say you worry about the optics. What exactly about the optics? Are you <laughs> yeah. worried that people will think that you guys are together? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm worried people will think I'm coming to the pottery studio to get with little old ladies or something. Hmm. Okay, so you had, had does she like have, have she ever made eye contact with you or or really had any kind of interaction with you aside from squeezing your ass? When she's there, like sometimes we'll kind of make that really brief eye contact where you make eye contact and then just kind of like turn your head, pretend you're looking somewhere else. Like, so if we have made eye contact, it's been that sort of awkward. It doesn't last. It's not like we're staring into each other's eyes for a prolonged period of time. Hmm. So, okay. So you're telling me that uh, you don't really give a shit. It doesn't really bother you uh, that it, much. It, she's, it, it's just like, 
it's become this weird thing that happens that, and you know, the whole reason I got into pottery was I wanted to go do something kind of like meditative and artistic and creative. And everyone who's there, like no one's going there to meet. It's not a social place. Like everyone is just kind of like got their headphones in and is working and in their own little pottery world, you know? So it's not like anyone's going there to hook up, you know? Um, but it's well, just it when like I go there, I want to relax. Uh, I don't uh, want to have beg to, to differ. <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, see, again, it hasn't progressed. She hasn't said anything. Like, so I don't even know what it means. I don't. I don't even know what her end game is. To be honest. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Would you like her to stop? Um, if she stopped, I wouldn't be disappointed. I wouldn't be like, oh, what happened? Where did this fall off? But, but if she. Again, my worry is that people, someone has had to have seen it by this point, and my worry is that people are seeing it and thinking that there's something going on there. Okay, so there's no active good that you perceive in this. But but there is no the potential but there is the potential but there's the potential for active bad. Yes, active bad, and not necessarily from her actions, but well, I don't want people thinking I'm taking advantage of a little old uh, pottery lady. Okay. So what is um, stopping you mentally from uh, telling her to stop? Because, again, it's like a communal sort of environment. It's in a big open warehouse type of pottery studio. There's nowhere in there where you can really have a private conversation. Like, it's dead quiet in there all the time. They play, like, some radio station with, like, very soft classical music. If anyone has a conversation in there, even if they're whispering, you hear every word, you know? Mm -hmm. So even if I, like, asked her politely, could you not do that? Like, people will hear, and it'll cause... um, a scene or, or so you so you're you so you you, you won't even you won't even you won't you won't even uh you know when she does it turn to her and be like hey can you not do that because you your desire to have that conversation is less than your desire to not make a scene pretty much yeah well here's the thing uh yeah this old lady i don't know what the fuck her fucking deal is you know uh, uh, she totally should. No, I don't not. know either. Cause yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, she totally shouldn't. Uh, you know, be grabbing your ass. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, this this is a really like kind of a a tough one because I understand all all your uh, all your concerns about it. Right? You don't want to cause like, a scene, geez. but you, like you don't sound like you give a shit enough to cause a scene even. Not, not. It's not worth it. It's really not. Not even like she's really forcefully or aggressively grabbing me. Like her grip is. It's. It's a pretty sad little squeeze, to be honest with you. Like, and she's just like she's exactly like what you would picture a little hippie pottery lady to look like. Like you know. Hmm. It, Have you it's talked bizarre. to the? And I, uh... and I love the hobby. I've really enjoyed it. I don't want to just like stop going either. Yeah. Have you talked to uh, the? The who, who what would you say instructor about it? That's interesting. I hadn't thought of that, but it, it, that's almost even more embarrassing to sort of like go to uh, yeah the people that kind of run facilitate the place and like rat out this old lady. And honestly, I've seen her work. She's really talented. She she makes really beautiful pottery. Hmm. I would hate. That's the other thing too. Like it, it's. I, I don't want to like uh, throw her under the bus. Like, hmm. yeah, this is a tough one, man. I mean, listen, I wouldn't, I, I, you know, I wouldn't advise you to do anything that you're not comfortable with. It almost feels like when you look into your like when you really when you are really looking at the situation, it almost seems like it like her touching you makes you less uncomfortable then the idea of doing something about it does. That's, that's, yeah, I can see that. Doing something about it seems like more of a hassle. But again, then I keep sort of, I'm caught in this loop because then I just keep coming back to like, well, if it keeps happening, people are going to notice. Hmm. 
tell tell just you should tell you should tell her to stop grabbing your ass probably. <laughs> you should, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I don't know like why we're polar, batting this around. Like, wait, wait I don't up, know why wait, we've wait, been wait, batting that. We've been batting this around for too long. You should tell her to stop grabbing your ass. <laughs> That's that's how that's how I'll conclude this. Uh, find like, a way. Do a whis- Do a whisper. Maybe like, hey, can, you know, bring her to a a quiet corner of the warehouse. Be like, hey, ma'am, can I talk to you for a sec? Bring her. Be like, hey, listen, I I'm not here to make a big deal about this, but could you just stop doing that? Tell tell her to stop. <laughs> tell her to stop, Mac. Okay, I mean. There's no way. I know you're saying, like, oh, it's a small room. It'll make a scene. There's a way to do it without making a scene. Tell her to stop. You don't have to make a whole scene about it. Like I said, like, kind of pulling her aside, and and it's almost... I want to be tactful. It's almost more embarrassing in a weird way, but I get what you're I saying. I get it. Like, I get it. It's a, a by the way, look, dude. It's annoying it. that you have to do this at all. You shouldn't have to do this. She shouldn't be <laughs> fucking with you in the first place. But go ahead, tell her to stop. I, okay, I will. I will. Is there anything what else you, you want to say to like that? Is it weird if I like waited outside, kind of like? The uh, the how I, the the how is is less important to me than the than the the whether or not to do it, and uh, I think we've decided right. we're going to do it. We're going to tell her, uh, and w- if there is a will, there is a way. Okay, well, we'll I appreciate your that feedback, out. and yeah, I mean, I'll I'll tell her, I'll tell her to just you know. Again, I don't want to make her feel bad. I'll be as polite as possible as you can mm-hmm. be in that situation, but I'll just say you know. Stop grabbing my butt. Beautiful. Yeah, well, and like I'll I said, I, I, I don't, I don't think there's a, uh, I don't think there's a wrong way to do it, as long as you do it. Okay, good. Okay. Is there anything you want to say I to will. the people at the computer before we go, Mac? Um, no, just I want to say thank you to you for having me on. It's honestly like uh, a pleasure and an honor to talk to you, and I really appreciate you. You're, you do great work, and it's always fun to listen to you and uh wild to be talking to you thank you so much brother mac it's wild to be talking to you too man take care and good luck with you thanks have a good night all right let's unpack that call oh man mac 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 first of all mac what a good guy i liked him a lot uh, we batted that around back and forth. I did. He he mentioned that it's funny because he mentioned that he was in a loop about it, the loop of like, well, I don't really want to make it a big deal because I don't really care that much, but I should, you know, get ahead of the issue in case if anything one thinks that like I'm involved with this person and the optics are weird and, but I don't want to. And he was just in a loop. And I got the reason that call was so long is I got caught in that loop with him. He brought me along with the loop. And I think eventually I noticed we were in this loop. And I was like, all right, we uh, let's break the loop. Let's tell this lady to stop grabbing uh, grabbing your ass. Um, I hope he does it. I hope he makes that decisive decision to exit his loop. Um... I don't know what the f- fuck is up with this lady. She hit, doesn't say anything to him. No eye contact. Or she's just grabbing his ass. What the fuck's going on? Um, Max seems like he's chill about it. Uh, dude, I don't know. That was a tough one. I'm trying to see if I have any further thoughts. That was what Mac needed, was to, to break out of his loop with a decision on what to do. And I hope he makes that decision, and I hope uh, hope he does not return to the loop again. 